Well, aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And thank you for joining me today on this live stream. Today I'll be top, touching on a subject that should have a lot There could be a hundred live streams on this exact same subject, but it will be on the nature, power, and significance of aligning ourselves to our creator. And I hope that that will be of value to you whatever wisdom comes through. Since there's not any uh, uh, direct books on this necessarily, I've already asked Kevin to download the information to me so that I can present it in a way where everybody gets some value out of it, regardless of where you're at on your spiritual journey. <coughs> All of us have some level of awakening and some level of awareness on our spiritual journey, and some of us more than others. And uh, But a lot of us maybe are not aligned necessarily as much as we need to be, or could be with our beloved creator. Um, a lot of that has to do with the way we have been taught, how we've been taught, what we have been taught, and even what we have not been taught. And certainly the information that I'll share with you today will be uh, snippets, just at the very crumbs, if you will, of what could assist um, you and all of us to further align to our creator. But. Uh, if, it, if those crumbs can be of value to you, then, then I'm grateful for that opportunity to serve you. <clears throat> so it should be uh, fun and enlivening. Last week I did a, a live stream on um, the divine perspective on love. And people ask questions uh, re regarding relationship, a single relationship. And then I, I tuned in and, and allowed uh, the divine uh, wisdom to come through and share what how, how the divine would respond to or act around a, a particular uh, subject matter and so uh, there's a, a lot of wisdom that can be learned from that so let's check in with who's joined us so far here today welcome Samba Aloha Phyllis welcome also Don Robinson uh, welcome Erica thank you all for your presence Aloha Emma welcome Kim Aloha Tony Aloha also Johannes and thank you for coming, all of you. Welcome also to Lisa Zarniak. Thank you for your presence. Also, thank you for clicking on the share button uh, to let other people know about today's live stream. Um, if some of you may or may not be joining me on Sundays when I chant Love, Peace, and Harmony to serve those with a condition of cancer, but I invite you to put it on your calendar. It's six hours later than when this one starts on Sunday. So just add six hours to whatever your time is. And they have a pretty good idea <coughs> of when that starts. Uh, and Sunday, every Sunday at 6 p.m. Hawaii time, we chant to serve others with the condition of cancer, singing love, peace, and harmony. I recognize some of you join me at that time, but I also invite some of you. Uh, welcome also to Sarah. Thank you all for coming, and thank you for clicking on the share button. So one thing you can do to help this video be more seen is occasionally if I say something that's intriguing or, or invite you to click more, uh, hit the hearts and the shares and the likes and the thumbs up. Um, those actually are counted by Facebook's algorithm. They figure, well, if somebody's hitting the heart buttons a lot or happy faces a lot, it must be a good video. This is how they, they think. So I don't know, but that's just their way of doing things. Welcome, Ani Savage. Welcome also, Diana Victoria. <clears throat> so as you can tell, um, it must be a little cool here in Hawaii. I'm actually wearing a long sleeve shirt. I think it's the first one I've wore this year in Hawaii uh, with one or two exceptions of being out in the evenings uh, most recently this last month. February tends to be our least uh, least good weather month here in Hawaii. We tend to get more rain and uh, heck even on the, the taller mountains on the uh, other islands they got some snow. So it does get cool here in Hawaii um, opposite of popular belief uh, but yeah today I get to wear this a little bit and then we're back to the sunshine tomorrow welcome uh, lava thank you for your joining so let's go ahead and connect we'll let Facebook gather a few more souls <coughs> excuse me and as I do in each one of my live streams we connect by singing the song of love peace and harmony you can place your hands in prayer position which is a hand mudra or you can drop your left hand in front of your heart center whatever is comfortable for you and close your eyes and I will call in the beings of light. Relax your breath into your lower abdomen. Dear our beloved divine creator, we love you, we honor you, respect you. I ask for your presence today to assist 
in releasing this great wisdom on the nature, power, and significance of aligning to you. How, what and how can we do more to further align our hearts and souls so that we do not suffer so much, so that we can be happier and healthier in our lives? We ask for your guidance and your wisdom today in whatever way is most appropriate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear all of the beings of light, including my Heaven's team, all of our Heaven's teams, guides, angels, and saints, our own soul, all the angels, healing angels, archangels, lamas, sifus, gurus, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas, we love you, honor you, respect you all, deeply appreciate you all, and I bow my head to all of you. I ask most humbly in whatever way is most appropriate for your presence today. Come to each and every one of us watching on this live stream. Bless us in whatever way can assist us to further align our hearts and souls to our beloved Creator. We're extremely grateful for all that you do, especially all that you do for us that is unseen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And dear the song of love, peace, and harmony, we invite you to turn on. And as we sing love, peace, and harmony as a group, <clears throat> we ask that you radiate your love, your peace, and your harmony to all souls in all universes and assist each and every one of us to further awaken and develop uh, our hearts and souls to the to the oneness that creator is thank you so for those that are new this is a mantra it is a song it's been translated into 42 languages and, uh, you can request a healing for this uh, song because it is a healing song and um, you may also uh, choose to join and sing along with us if you like <clears throat> let us begin Lula, Lula, li. Lu la lu la la li la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la wo ai wo xin er ling wo ai zuan man lei ang ling rong er mu sher shong shong ai ping on a she shong ai ping on a she i love my heart and soul i love all humanity join hearts and souls together Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For those that are new, how is a Mandarin Chinese word that means perfect, get well, excellent, complete. <clears throat> and we say uh, three hows and three thank yous. The first thank you is to our beloved divine creator. The second thank you is to all the beings of light who come to offer a service each and every day in each and every moment. The third thank you is to our own soul. And so we'll start there as uh, welcome also to Diana, uh, welcome Ilona, welcome Susan Birchmore, welcome Leah Barber, welcome uh, Abigail, Aloha. Uh, let's see if I missed anybody. Sage Lee, Aloha, welcome. Thank you for your presence. <coughs> so one of the things that is the first week and when I, uh, I teach a course is called Open Your Spiritual Channels. It's a 12-week course and um, I, I'm in the middle of my fifth uh, round of teaching that course. And what I've been able to witness is the growth of the students, tremendous, tremendous growth in their alignment with the Creator. Each of them come from different backgrounds, different cultures, different religions, different belief systems. From different places in the world I have men I have women I have all kinds of different ages and, and and none of the people that attend these courses have any commonality necessarily other than they're all on the spiritual journey of awakening to a higher level than where they started when they started the course and one of the things that occurs uh, in the very first course is I give them a basic foundation on the soul spend quite a bit of time to set this foundation at the end of that first week uh, I I give them an assignment and this is the first part of the nature power and significance of being aligned with the Creator because the assignment is for every morning when they wake up to 
offer gratitude for three things but they're not allowed to use the same three things that they've already spoken before so after 21 days that's 21 separate things that you're grateful for after a month that's 90 separate things you're grateful for some of you might my god how can you find 90 things to be grateful for well you'd be very surprised when that's the homework it's actually very enlightening and very awakening because there are truly a million things you can be grateful for but we're so stuck in a little world why is this the first week of homework because it's designed to open their hearts to our beloved divine creator where do you come from where who created you did you know this is this is proven science did you know that you radiate not just an aura you radiate energetic photonic energy and that photonic energy in the chair that you sit right now the chair that I sit right now when you leave this chair after this live stream and walk to the kitchen or walk outside or whatever if you had the right scientific electronic equipment you could see uh, literally a, a, a light halo that looks like your body still sitting in the chair how is that possible what's that mean what it means is we are light beings really get that we are light this is science is validated not only is that light still in the chair but it stays there scientifically validated for 30 days and then the light dissipates so literally where you move is this light streak falling behind you you remember the old movies where you see the acid trip or you move your hand you're like whoa and the light follows your hand well literally from heaven's view you are a light vessel and they see light moving from room to room and around the house and down the street to go, go drop the kids off at school you are not a physical person named Bob or Paul or Mary you are a light being and so what is the nature and power and significance of aligning to the Creator when you start to realize that the purpose of life is to align our hearts and souls the purpose of life is to become one with the Creator Master Shah's one sentence secret the purpose of life is to serve why what serve who serve what why the purpose of life is to serve because service is an open heart service is the opposite of selfishness service is selflessness so one of the many 84,000 ways to enlightenment, one of the highest is through service. There's 83,999 more ways to enlightenment, but one of the highest is through service. When we look at these factual pieces of information, such as the human being is literally a light vessel, you can transform yourself into more of one much, much easier. Now let's imagine that you got up in the day and you said your gratitude three times to the divine for three unique things each day and let's imagine that that day while you were sitting down to drink and you picked up your glass and you said dear heaven please enjoy this water first and then you drink dear heaven please enjoy this food first and then you eat if you started doing things like that throughout the day what in essence are you doing you are aligning your light vessel more and more and more to the Creator most of us are going the opposite direction trying to go the right direction we go the opposite direction by doing things that are keeping us out of alignment um, having a negative thought keeps us out of alignment so many things keep us out of alignment what happens when we are in alignment what happens when we offer our food or drink to Creator? When we offer our gratitude, like we did at the beginning, you know, we invited all the beings of light, we offered our gratitude for their presence. They're here, they're all around us right now. The nature, power, and significance of aligning to our Creator is literally happiness, literally the release of suffering. The Buddha has many, many, quotes that some of them may or may not have been 
captured correctly or accurately. And even re rephr rephrasing this quote right now may not be exactly accurate, but the intention behind it would still be obvious. And that is the statement that life is suffering. The Buddha would say life is suffering. Why? Because we approach life with closed eyes. We approach life like, I have to do this. It's up to me to be successful. I have to do this and this and this to succeed. I have to do this and this and that to buy that shiny new red truck. I have to do this and this and that to find my soulmate. I have to make myself prettier, taller, or blonder, shorter, or fatter, or skinnier, whatever it might be before I can find someone to love me. I have to lose weight. I have to gain weight before somebody will love me. Blah, 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 blah. It's not about <laughs> our <laughs> this skin, this face, this name. It's not about uh, this personality, guys. We are light vessels, light beings. And in order to move towards happiness, in order to release suffering, like I said, the Buddha said life is suffering. Why is it suffering? Because we are not aligned to the light which birthed us. We were birthed by the light, by the Creator. We are light beings, scientifically validated. So in doing any effort that moves us towards the light, we are naturally going to be more happy. This includes looking at things through the divine's eyes. Anytime an event happens, anytime an occurrence happens, anytime an accident happens, anytime anything happens, we have a choice of how we react and how we respond. Because how we react and how we respond has an instant and immediate impact on our future. It has an instant and immediate impact on our happiness in that moment. And it has an instant and immediate impact on the future in a few hours, a few days, and a week, and a month, and a year down the road. Just as the pile of doo-doo we're stepping into today, or the, the flowers that we're wafting through on this day, the reason we're stepping in that pile of doo-doo or we're wafting through flowers on this given day is because of what we brought to the table behind us. What did you do yesterday? What did you do last week, last month, last year? What was your reactions, your thoughts, your uh, perspectives? We have control over many things, but we are often too busy to stop and take responsibility, I guess is the best way to put it, for that control. Uh, I was at the farmer's market with my wife. We have a farmer's market. It was early Saturday morning, dark out. Light had not come up yet. And I was setting up the table. I had my coffee on the table. I do coffee about once a week, and it's you know, 4 a.m., so I need my coffee, right? <clears throat> and uh, it was a Starbucks, you know? It's one of those $100 coffees. So, uh, But I lifted up the table to put something underneath it, and the $100 coffee fell off on the ground. If it was me 10 years ago, oh, damn it, blah, 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 blah. What kind of energy does that create in my future? Well, in the instant future, I could be angry for a half hour, hour. Through practice, through consciousness, you can, I can, we all can react and respond differently. It is always a choice. It is, it is not something that's out of our control. There's so many things that we have allowed ourselves to believe that are out of our control. When we are aligned to our Creator, we can make a conscious choice to not react and respond negatively. Master Shah has taught his students, when everything, uh, whenever anything happened in the room, with 500 people, 300 people in a room, something would break, something would fall, somebody would come up on stage and they would spill something. There's four or five people on stage and, and they all have uh, waters in their hands and one of them puts it down to to speak and then kicks it with their foot right water all over the place regardless of what the spill was what he taught his students was good luck congratulations financial flourishing so now any any of master Shah's students whenever anything spills the first thing they'll say is great financial flourishing now this is what's called a self-fulfilling prophecy 
if you believe it, it comes to fruition. This is not an ancient wisdom teaching. This is not something that, that if you spill it automatically creates financial blessings. No, it's not something that's been passed down by the highest master. It's a much deeper and more relevant wisdom. How do you react and respond to things and events affects your future? These are all about alignment to the source. How do we reach enlightenment? How do we maintain our light body, build our light body that you already have if you do not be conscientious of your thoughts, words, and actions in each moment? So what he brought to his students was a different way to look at things. Instead of a reaction that had been drummed into our head because when we were kids we would spill something and the parents would yell at us or they would smack the, the table we were sitting at or let us know that it was not okay. Sometimes you get parents that are really good and they'll say, oh, isn't that wonderful? Until we knock it over three times and they might get a little upset. <clears throat> but we're, 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 it's been drummed into our head that spilling and breaking things are bad. The wisdom is that how do we respond? How do we react? Because that's what creates your future. Welcome, Abigail. Welcome, Stan Dabian. Welcome, Rosetta. Welcome, uh, Dean LaCroix. Welcome, NNC. Aloha, Becky Stryker. Welcome, Mari Wena. And Mary, uh, Mary Taratuta. Aloha, Kristen Strachan. Uh, if I miss your name, welcome, Audrey. Aloha, Gloria. And Lee Barber. I think I've got everyone. If I missed you, forgive me. Thank you for your presence. So I'm going to do a flow now on the nature, power, and significance of being aligned to the divine creator. Because there's different things that can inhibit us. But what's the value once we are aligned? Let's find out. Let's ask the source. I'll borrow my mouth and see what they say. Dear the source, I love you, honor you, I bow to you. Could you please borrow my mouth, offer guidance on the nature, power, and significance of being aligned to the Creator? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, I One of the expectations is that you will see things through the eyes of the Creator. How does the Creator see things? The Creator sees things all through your eyes. Literally, your eyes are the Creator's eyes. Imagine having seven billion pairs of eyes. Imagine that the Creator sees through all of the animals and the eyes of the fly that has 108 possible points of view. Imagine that the Creator sees through the eyes of the birds that fly, that the Creator sees through the eyes of all that exists. All of these different forms of input come to the Creator and are absorbed. What is absorbed is then sent back to all those that delivered what they were experiencing. The Creator did not judge. The Creator did not condone or agree. The Creator did not criticize or label. The Creator simply observed unconditionally with the greatest and highest purity.
those that are referred to as enlightened beings adopt this way of being. They do not judge or criticize. They honor all things equally. They do not worry about anything, for they know the wellspring of their life is not from the food, the water, the job, the husband or wife, but from their creator. Those that are aligned are trouble free, accident free, pain free. They are healthy, happy. They are, in fact, the beings of light that have learned the skill set of detachment from mind activities, selfish activities, and false love activities. They have aligned their heart to the one creator. Being, therefore, a vessel through which the Divine's love and light radiate through, unencumbered, to those on the receiving end. Those that you call enlightened are, in essence, like a piece of glass that does not impede the light coming from Creator, but enhance its effects upon those whom they shine. In order to move from where you are to be like these enlightened beings, it is important first and foremost to move through and past selfishness to move towards value and service to others to trust that all is in divine order and divine timing to allow whatever is to happen to happen to bring forth action that is required but to allow the divine to align the results for the highest and best for all Each of you are pure light beings created in the heart of your beloved divine. Each of you know these words, these feelings, and have experienced it before. In this experience, of this realm you are engaged in a play of light in which you have a personality do not get caught up in this play of light realign yourself to the one creator Become the glass like the enlightened ones, 
Do not react, do not respond. Do not judge, do not criticize. Smile more, complain less. Be grateful for everything and your alignment will increase. Your pain will decrease. Your heart will open more. Your suffering will dissolve. And your path will become more and more clear. Ponder these words. Apply this wisdom every day. Your life could turn around quite quickly if you simply applied these wisdoms. This is one speaking on behalf of the divine. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Got about 10 degrees hotter with that flow. Okay. So there's quite a bit of wisdom in that. Certainly a lot more I can make, than I can make up on my own. One of the things that was spoken about, I, I kind of liked what, what was being said about the, the enlightened beings being basically like a mirror, or not a mirror, like a, a piece of glass where heaven's light comes through them. They don't impede it. They become a clearer vessel. A clearer vessel is not a vessel that suffers. So when we look at the title of this life theme, the nature, power, and significance of being aligned, what is one of the side effects? Not suffering. Raise your hand if you want to stop suffering, right? Raise your hand if you'd like to align more to the divine. The wisdom has just been shared. Mostly it's up to us. Complaining is probably one of the biggest things that inhibit us from happiness. And I encourage all of you to really take a close look at that. I still complain a lot, and I know these things. But I pay attention as much as I can. And when I catch myself complaining, which is not as much as I do, <clears throat> I instantly apply Master Shah's wisdom. I ask forgiveness. And I try to look at things from a different light. I try to look at it through the light of the divine's eyes. How would the divine react? How would the divine respond? Everything in divine timing, as was just stated in the flow. Everything according to the divine. When we allow, things tend to work out quite a bit better. Would you agree? You can give me thumbs up if that's in agreement with you. One of the things that will assist a lot is doing the simple practices. Master Shah brings very simple practices that some of you do, some of you don't. Uh, what are they? Very simple practices like opening our heart practices, forgiveness practices. Why can these help us? How can these help us each and every day be more aligned to our Creator? Well, very simply, we all came from the heart of our original Creator. We were given the free will and we went out, we expressed ourselves as free souls. In some of those expressions, we expressed ourselves against other souls, creating spiritual imbalance, negative energies. And heaven, our creator, uh, did not say, oh, you're bad, you're good, because we're all part of the same heaven's body. Well, heaven does not look at his left side and say, you're a bad left side, you're good right side. Heaven doesn't do that. Creator doesn't do that. Heaven looks through the eyes of everything without judgment, without criticism. We need to do the same. We need to actually look at when we are complaining and stop it. Do forgiveness every day. One of the reasons we complain, one of the reasons we have suffering in our life is because we've earned it. Whether we want to admit it or not, doesn't really matter. Um, if there is uh, suffering in your life on any level, on some level, we have made mistakes. We have had unpleasant thoughts, unpleasant spoken words, or have offered unpleasant actions to others. This is very simple. It's not hard math. And 
the idea is to remove the suffering so we can be happier and healthier aligned to our Creator when we are aligned by offering forgiveness asking forgiveness every day by opening our hearts sending love chanting love peace and harmony very very simple steps that we can repeat every day what are we doing we are erasing part of that negative energy on our record we are literally washing it away with a fire hose each and every day little by little by little but what if throughout the day what if you're one of those people that does this every day but throughout the day we complain so we do a forgiveness practice in the morning and we erase and then throughout the day we go damn this dang that why did they do this why did they do that i can't believe they did this i can't believe they did that oh my god however you say it whatever the complaint most of the time it's not even in our mouth most of the time it's up here we think it and so the erasing we did that morning it gets back onto our record because we had a negative thought word or action towards others who are others others are not bob bill mary jan others are souls like you and me and guess where we all came from same place so we're not assisting anybody on their journey including ourselves when we complain so it's important to do the practices but it's important to do the next step to go further stop the complaining stop the the whining move towards allowance everything happens for a reason everything happens to serve our soul journey when something that could be viewed as negative enters our life and all of you can can look at just today and find one negative thing that's entered your life when something like that has come look at it through God's eyes look at it through heaven's eyes their love for us is so big they want us to move towards the light but what's keeping us moving towards the light that negative thing that's right in front of us that's what's keeping us from moving towards the light why is that negative thing there it's part of our spiritual awakening how do we remove that negative thing in front of us well the first is to not complain about it the second is to look at it through different eyes to look at it through the eyes of how would an enlightened being respond to this occurrence that's in front of me would they respond with love would they respond with forgiveness would they uh, recognize that it's possibly a repayment of a debt that had been made something where we or others had made a mistake and accordingly uh, that mistake came back to remind us so we ask forgiveness we don't complain about it we say if I have harmed anybody that has brought this kind of an unpleasant condition to them like has just come to me you know, maybe you lose a job let's use that as an example we can complain we can go out and drink six beers and drink ourselves under the table we can uh, slam our fists and say why God why you do this to me we can do all kinds of things that don't help anybody or we can say dear heaven dear all souls of humanity if I or my ancestors have kept people from getting jobs fired people inappropriately gossiped uh, uh, in other people's job conditions and as a result they lost their job um, if I was I or my ancestors were greedy did things in which people had healthy incomes and then we cut their jobs so that we could have more wealth and more profit if I or my ancestors have done these kinds of things and as a result I lost my job whatever the reason for this I sincerely sincerely apologize heaven's light shines on you clears that blockage very quickly your job shows up just like that life moves on happily when we are aligned to the source when we recognize these simple teachings and apply these simple teachings as these life events come to us we have to start looking at them through higher wisdom we have to start responding and reacting to them with higher wisdom then things will start getting a little bit better and a little bit better when we start complaining a little bit less and a little bit less and we start catch ourselves complaining and we we ask forgiveness we catch ourselves judging somebody we ask forgiveness uh, I had this loop all last week in my mind about the apartment manager always getting me always writing me letters uh, I say always what once or twice a month I'll get a little letter saying you know clean this up you left this out whatever and I'm looking around saying well, why aren't they complaining to anybody else so I'm complaining in my head right why are they picking on me now I could have finished there but the negative loop kept running in my head once a day I'd have this little thought run through my head and if I gave it energy guess what 
It happens in every recording on my Akashic record. More negative and more negative, more negative. So finally, I had to just stop and say, look, talk to myself. Look, I'm done with this. Dear this soul, this manager, please come. I did a forgiveness practice with her soul. Obviously, at some point in time, I've, I've done something to create irritation between us. Um, da, 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 da. I sincerely apologize. Also, I apologize for all this, this week long of monkey mind thoughts looping. It, I can't possibly be the only person that has this kind of monkey mind thoughts going on. The key is applying the wisdom. The key is unwinding it. Ever since I did that practice, it just doesn't come around anymore. I'm, I'm done with it. Okay, But it didn't leave. It just kept coming back every day. Why? Because that's heaven's love for me. Heaven's love for you works in the same way. They will bring these opportunities, which is exactly what they are, for us to purify so that we can align and open our heart more to heaven. Because they want us to stop suffering. They want us to have less and less of it. But that cannot occur until we uh, 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 do our part to release the blockages that have come to us on purpose. We created those blockages. The next part is to uh, assist others to be happy and healthy, right? smile at others uh, sing love peace and harmony for those that don't know about it come to my my sundays uh chanting love peace harmony for those with the condition of cancer every day at 12 o'clock sing love peace and harmony a million different ways you can offer service it can be offering a dollar to somebody on the street whatever it is all of those create positivity in your record what does that do for you that means less suffering alignment to source the power and significance of alignment to source is awakening. The power and significance is less suffering. The power and significance is seeing things through heaven's eyes. The power and significance of alignment is not getting caught up in the drama of the personality. Personality of Bob, Mary, Joe, Paul, Kim, whatever your name is. We all get caught up in our own personal little world of stuff. You know, one of the persons came in and they said, please, give, do a soul reading for me. This is not a soul reading. This is, I can give you a loaf of bread or I can teach you how to bake your own bread. If I give you a loaf of bread, you're good for a day or two and then you go find the next psychic or you go find the next soul reader. That's not going to help you, I promise. You must apply these wisdoms each and every day. That's why you're here. That's why your soul brought you here. You could be done with my life streams after today. Move on to a different teacher. Get a new, new level of wisdom, different kind of wisdom. The soul journey doesn't always mean you follow the same teacher. The soul journey is you go where you need to go to advance your skill set, advance your awakening, wherever that is. My teacher is Master Shah. It's the third enlightened being I followed. I realized a long time ago that if I, if I don't follow someone with higher wisdom than me, I'm going to fail. And so I had to let go of my ego instead of thinking I knew what was going on. I decided to follow someone that had blazed a trail before me and I will follow this teacher as long as I resonate with the truth as long as what is being taught me and the wisdoms being taught benefit my life that's why I share with you his wisdoms because it's got great benefit to me I encourage you to do the same <clears throat> and so let's do a practice and then we'll complete this live stream let us place our hands and prayer position or soul light soul service hand position and what we're going to do is we're going to open our hearts a bit more and we're going to do a forgiveness practice so that we can align our heart more with the divine so close your eyes and bring your thoughts and your mind and your breath into the middle of your body nice big deep lung filled breath and release and again ah <sighs> Become fully present. Bring a smile to your face. I want you to think of your beloved creator. God, the source, the brightest being of light with a huge love for you. A love so big that it radiates right through your body, cleansing and purifying everything you've ever said negative about yourself all the self-judgment self-criticism just dissolves away the light is so bright and imagine this being of light comes down from heaven coming down from heaven so big surrounded by many many angels such a huge being of light 
hard to even make out the shape. And this being of light keeps coming down from heaven till it's above your head. Seems so far away and so bright. And this beautiful being of light comes into your heart center. So bright that your entire body is just blasted with light. Last of with light as this being of light comes into your body, your soul, and your creator's soul meld your soul and the creator's soul become melded as one. Feel the love of your divine creator. Release, open your heart. If you could feel the Creator's love, what would it feel like? Open your heart. Release. The love is so pure, it washes away any negativity from your childhood. The love is so pure, it washes away negative thinking. Watch it as it washes away. Whoosh. God's love for you, Creator's love for you, can clear everything. Bring the Creator's love brighter, more. Radiate the Creator's love to your pain. Ask the Creator, could you please forgive me my mistakes that have brought me this pain? I love you. Send your love. I love you, my beloved Creator. More love. I love you, my beloved Creator. Go very deep. I love you, my beloved divine creator. I completely, completely love you. Beyond grateful. So grateful. Thank you, my beloved divine creator. Send your love even more. I love you with all my heart. My deepest of hearts. I love you, love you, love you, my beloved divine creator. I'm so grateful for you, for your love for me. Thank you for bringing such beautiful people into my life. Think of the beautiful souls that have come into your life. The ones closest to you, children, loved ones, family. Offer your gratitude to God for bringing these souls to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Offer your gratitude for all that you have. I'm so grateful for everything that you have given me. Cannot bow down in gratitude enough. Please forgive me my lack of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so humbled that you would come to sit in my body, clearing my blockages. What love you must have, my beloved divine, to come to sit in my body and bless me to clear my blockages. I love you so much for your unconditional love. And now ask, dear my beloved divine creator, could you please bless my future so that I complain less, so that I become more loving, kind, and compassionate? Could you please bless me to release negative thinking, attitudes, and unpleasant beliefs. 
could you please bless me, my beloved divine creator, to open my heart more every day so that I can align to you more every day. Be like the enlightened beings. Be like a piece of glass that shines your love and light upon others. I would be most humbled to receive your blessings, my beloved divine creator. And just bathe in the divine's love and light. Breathe it in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Breathe it in again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nothing can survive in this light. Everything that is of darkness cannot exist when the Creator is within you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the Divine has a message for each of you. He wants to tell you that invite me into your heart every moment, every day. I wish to be in you more. Continue to connect and invite me. I will serve you. I love you all unconditionally. And offer your gratitude to the divine. There is no need. The divine wishes to stay. So as you return and open your eyes, the divine is still inside you. And smile about that. And then return. Congratulations, everybody. This is a very simple way to align our heart and soul to divine. Divine is not outside us. Divine is everywhere, including inside. And we can simply invite divine to come inside. Receive the love. Ask forgiveness. Offer love. Do our part throughout the day. Once each and every day, this very simple alignment practice can serve you forever. It truly can be that simple. Of course, apply the other wisdoms that were shared earlier today. Stop complaining. Catch yourself when you do something unpleasant. Reverse the action. There is so much value in alignment. Do you want to stop suffering? If the answer is yes, then do these things daily. Do not have unrealistic expectations. <clears throat> if you've been suffering many years, it could take a year or two to unwind it all, but it will get better and better and better. Just continue to practice. So you're welcome, Judy Thompson. I'm so happy for you, Rhonda. Congratulations. You're welcome, Maria Sabra. You're welcome, Laurie. Aloha. Welcome. Thank you for this opportunity to be present to you, to share this with you. If you're not familiar with Master Shah, I invite you to come to his events, March 16 and 17. You can go to his website, drsha.com drsha.com scroll to the bottom left side and you'll see his events plenty of things to see on that website keep you busy for days but do register for his events he offers extraordinary healing blessings that can transform relationships any part of your life helps clear the blockages and helps bring more divine light and love into your body 
I invite you to return on Thursday, three hours earlier than when I started today. And uh, I will be doing another live stream at that time. And please tell your friends and share this live stream. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All the beings of light remain as long as you'd like. And when you're ready to return, please respectfully return. Thank you, everybody. Love you. We'll see you Thursday. Bye-bye.